Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a TrueNet, and welcome back to Mass Effect 2 The Insanity Run, and welcome indeed to the grand finale. The entire team is loyal, the Reaper IFF is ready, we are ready to go through the Omega 4 relay and rescue our crew that was kidnapped at the end of last part. There is nothing more we can do, except for saying one final goodbye. Fish, if this is it, I want you to know I loved you with all of my heart, and also here's some food. And here we are, launch the suicide mission. You know, I feel like we could possibly rebrand this. Like, if we want everyone to feel good about the suicide mission, maybe we don't call it a suicide mission. And there she is, unlike the normal blue Mass Effect Relay, we've got the slightly more threatening red, or I suppose really kind of pinkish fuchsia Mass Effect Relay right here, the Omega-4 Relay. Surrounded by hazard beacons and automated warnings, over the last thousand years, many ships have attempted to pass through it, but none have returned. There are many theories why ships never return from Omega 4. Some say there is a black hole at the far end. Others, mostly the impoverished underclass of Omega, believe there is some form of earthly paradise. Most, however, simply think the collectors capture or destroy those passing through the relay. And we are about to find out for certain. In we go. Please confirm destination, Shepard. The Reaper IFF is online, but there is a chance that the Normandy may not survive the Omega-4 relay. Once we are en route, we are committed. And we do indeed have to rescue our crew. The Collectors took my people. Time to go get them back. You got it, Commander. Plotting a course for the Omega-4 relay. ETA about two hours. I'll let you know when we arrive. This is, of course, the moment where you would have sex with a paramour if you'd actually been romancing someone who was on the ship. Of course, I haven't because I've been romancing Liara and she doesn't join you on the ship. She is over in the Shadow Broker's base, shadow brokering. So instead, I get this little cutscene. So up I come to my room, all alone, very, very sadly indeed. And over I go to the desk and, of course, we know what is there. It's the picture of Liara, who couldn't be here today. But I've just come to look at that, which is very, very sweet indeed. And that is indeed what happens if you romance a character in Mass Effect 1 who isn't in Mass Effect 2, but did survive. Actually, it's impossible to romance a character in Mass Effect 1 who didn't survive, because you can only romance someone after you make the choice to uh, sacrifice either Caden or Ashley. So I think you can have Caden or Ashley there as well. I don't think I've actually seen it myself, but I'm pretty sure they can be there. Shepard, I wish I had more information for you. I don't like you heading through that relay blind. But we don't have much choice. I'm not going alone. I've got some of the best working with me. If we stick together, we'll make it. I knew we brought you back for a reason. I've never seen a better leader. Despite the danger, it's a great opportunity. The first human to take a ship through and survive. I'm going to destroy the Collectors to stop their attacks on humanity. Understood. It's still impressive. I just wanted you to know I appreciate the risk you're taking. Regardless of your opinion of Cerberus, of me, you are a valuable asset to all of humanity. Be careful, Shepard. Approaching a Mega-4 relay. Everyone stand by. Let's make it happen. Reaper IFF activated. Signal acknowledged. Commander, the drive core just lit up like a Christmas tree. Drive core electrical charge at critical levels. Rerouting! Brace for deceleration. Oh shit! Too close. Well, these must be all the ships that tried to make it through the Omega-4 relay. Some look ancient. I have detected an energy signature near the edge of the accretion disk. Be a collector base. Take us in for a closer look. Nice and easy. Now 
Now this is the moment where the ship upgrades start becoming very, very important indeed. Taking evasive maneuvers. They're just pissing me off. Needy, take these bastards out. As long as the new plating holds. There we are, the new plating. If we didn't have new plating, Jack would have just died. Loyal or not, she is guaranteed to die if you don't upgrade the plating. So while Joker's dealing with that, we need to go and deal with an intruder in the cargo hold. One of those little annoying things has popped inside of me to take it out one-on-one. -on -one. Legion, of course, has a final uniform. His uniform, interestingly, is, rather than the others, which very much go kind of black and orange, his actually goes a lighter colour, which I don't like as much. I don't like his little spotlight being red. I like it being blue. I think it makes him look more friendly. He looks a lot more aggressive with a little kind of uh, the red spotlight. So I like him as the original. But it is nice that it's a bit different at least. It's not, well, it is really just a palette swap. But I think it's a more significant palette swap than you sometimes get. Now, the thing we're taking on, if I recall correctly, has an absolute ton of armor on it and hits pretty hard. So I need people who are good at taking out armor. Miranda will be good for boosting my own damage and Grunt is extremely good at staying alive. So I'd say that will be a perfectly solid Team for this. And now here we are down in the cargo bay, which otherwise we don't really bother visiting. Yes, indeed, this thing is absolutely nothing but uh, armor, which is kind of cool. So obviously Grunt wanted to go over to his ammo, because his ammo type is specific to this. Though actually, no offenders, maxed out squad warp armor probably works better anyway, but never mind. So we'll just everyone quickly go over to that. Of course, I want to go over to my anti-material rifle, because Grunt, I wouldn't, to be honest. But no offenders, that thing's going to focus on me, and... Just look how fast I can take that thing down. It's ridiculous. Now we just basically keep wailing on this thing. Throw warps at it. Throw... Oh, hello. It's moving around pretty quickly. Nope, it's starting to nip outside and it'll come back in through a different hole. Because it's kind of blown its way out of one hole into another. And then we just move over here. And then, in all fairness, if I could just go invisible for a second. Interestingly, I think it can actually keep shooting me even while I'm invisible. But, like, even on Insanity, you can see there it's not doing that much damage to me. Really? And I can take it out pretty darn quick. Just keep tossing everything at it. Lovely. It's trying to escape, I think. And now just keep shooting it in the eye. When it's down to half health, I believe we get a new cutscene. Or maybe we have to kill it twice. I honestly can't remember. But you can see here, this is arguably like one of the easiest bosses in the game. It's just not posing any threat whatsoever. And it never bothers to deal with any of my allies. It just goes for me instead. Now it's going to pop outside. And, oh, yep, indeed we were past half health. So now we're back to a cutscene. Our kinetic barriers are not designed to survive impact debris that size, Jack. Well, I guess it's a good thing we upgraded. Going in. That's Tali's upgrade. If you don't have Tali's upgrade to the shield, someone else will die here. It's not guaranteed to be anyone in particular. I see Thane happening a lot, but there is a defined order of characters it can happen to, depending on who is or isn't loyal. Reroute not critical power. This is gonna hurt. Take the helm, Edie, and keep it slow. See if we can avoid any more attention. Luckily, we did indeed have the barrier upgrade from Tali, so everyone survives again. And the Oculus is back again, except this time, irritatingly, it's decided it wants to be flipping. I was in a really good position, damn it. I was in such a good position, then you moved me out of the good position, you bastards. Right, let's get back into the good position, please. And over here, and now we can just do the exact same thing to it again. We don't have to use heavy weapons on this thing. Really, it's a massive waste. Just keep shooting it a bit. It'll pop out of holes. It'll come in for a different hole. Where is it now? It's going to be over here somewhere. And then just, yeah, wait for it to show up again. And now just 
Now, basically, I just need to get into cover somewhere where it can't hit me. It does occasionally fly over the top, which is a little bit on the annoying side. For once, it's decided to go for Miranda, not for me, which is fine. We have to use heavy weapons. The game's so insistent on this. You really don't. Look, it's fine. Look, it's already falling apart, damn it. Where's some more ammo? There we are. A bit more ammo for my sniper rifle. Go back over to that. Now we just hang out over here. Hello there. Go invisible. And there we go. It's probably going to shoot me in a second. If I just head around here, we are fine. Fine, it's already almost dead. Just keep taking it out, guys. It's absolutely fine. There's a warp, and now it's just going to go for the wall. I can just basically keep this pillar between me and it until it wears off. But yeah, this this room makes this very, very easy. And it's exploded. Lovely. Probably stay away from it when it bursts. And there it goes. Dead for sure this time. Better get back up here, Commander. We're about to clear the debris field. That boss is weirdly easy on Insanity. Like, it's pretty easy on all difficulties, but I really expect that to be a bit more difficult on Insanity. But never mind, easiest boss in the game. The Collector Base. See if you can find a place to land without drawing attention. Too late. Looks like they're sending out an old friend to greet us. Well, good thing that we've got that new Thanix cannon, and Garrus has well calibrated that thing. Interestingly, you do actually destroy this thing, even if you didn't upgrade the Thanix cannon, you just get up close to it and fire the normal missiles. Which raises the question why we didn't just do that in the first place. systems overloaded during the crash. Restoring operation will take time. We all knew this was likely a one-way trip. Our primary objective is to destroy the station and stop the collectors at any cost. Well, then we're off to a good start. What's next? First things first, Joker, are you and the ship safe here? How long until the collectors find this landing zone? I do not detect an internal security network. It is possible the collectors do not expect anyone to reach the base. Well, if we're lucky, their external sensors were hit like we were. They might not know we're alive. This isn't how we planned this mission, but this is where we're at. We can't worry about whether the Normandy can get us home. We came to stop the Collectors, and that means coming up with a plan to take out this station. Edie, bring up your scans. You should be able to overload their critical systems if you get to the main control center here. That means going through the heart of the station, right past this massive energy signature. That's the central chamber. If our crew or any of the colonists are still alive, the Collectors are probably holding them in there. It looks like there are two main routes. Might be a good idea to split up to keep the Collectors off balance, then regroup in the central chamber. No good. Both routes are blocked. See these doors? The only way past is to get someone to open them from the other side. It's not a fortress. There's got to be something. Here, maybe we can send someone in through this ventilation shaft. 
practically a suicide mission. I volunteer. I appreciate the thought, Jacob, but you couldn't shut down the security systems in time. We need to send a tech expert. It's your call, Commander. Who do we send into the shaft? And this here is how this mission goes. On a regular basis, you'll be told to designate a member of your team to go and do something. While they're doing that thing, they can't be part of your own squad of two people who follow you around, of course. If you pick the wrong people, they will die. So you've got to make sure you're picking the right people. Fortunately, the game does give you a hint, just in case you know you need a reminder what everyone's specialization is. It gives you a bit of text. So obviously, in this case, we need a tech specialist. The people who work are Tarly and Legion definitely work. I think someone else works. Can I remember who else is it that actually works? So the game doesn't give you, like, everyone. Like, you know, you can't send Jack in as your tech specialist. Like, it only gives you people who are at least remotely appropriate. But if you pick the wrong people, like, uh, for example, like, you know, Jacob, even though he's got a bit of technology and he volunteered, he will die, even if he's loyal. Whereas uh, Tali and Legion are definitely fine. I think Kasumi's okay? I maybe mean, just remember that. There's definitely a third person who's fine sending the van, so I just can't remember who it is. So I think we will send in Legion. That seems reasonable to me. Legion, you can hack through anything. I'm sending you into the shaft. Acknowledged. The rest of us will break into two teams and fight down each passage. That should draw the collector's attention away from what you're doing. I'll lead the second fire team, Shepard. We'll meet up with you on the other side of the doors. Not so fast, cheerleader. Nobody wants to take orders from you. This isn't a popularity contest. Lives are at stake. Shepard, you need someone who can command loyalty through experience. So now we need to pick a leader for a secondary team. Now in this occasion, I think you can actually pick pretty much anyone because you're just basically picking a leader. Obviously, the last thing you want is someone who is, you know, say, a bit of a loner. So Jack, for example, is an absolutely terrible choice because she's not used to leading. Down at the bottom here, however, we have got the best candidates, Garrus, Miranda, and Jacob. And sure, go on, let's actually start off with Garrus. He does very, very nicely indeed. He is used to commanding a squad of troops. I'm sure he'll be fine. Garrus, you're in charge of the second team. Well, at least he knows what he's doing. See, Miranda's happy with that state of affairs. I don't know what we're going to find in there, but I won't lie to you. It's not going to be easy. We've lost good people. We may lose more. We don't know how many the Collectors have stolen. Thousands, hundreds of thousands. It's not important. What matters is this. Not one more. That's what we can do here today. It ends with us. They want to know what we're made of? I say we show them on our terms. Let's bring our people home. So, who's going to be the best team? We're basically taking on nothing but collectors at this point. So, we're taking on a lot of biotic barriers, and we're taking on, potentially, if we're taking on Harbinger a few times, we're also taking on armor. So, I would say a good, solid team that balances firepower and survivability is Miranda and Grunt. I feel like those two together make a very, very solid team indeed. Because the problem with too many teams on Insanity is they're too squishy. They die too quickly. Grunt doesn't die too quickly. Grunt doesn't die at all, damn it. Grunt's pretty much invincible. Of course, we also see in the background there that Garrus has... I'm not sure how that's calculated, by the way, but Garrus has just decided he's going in with Thane. He's taking Thane. So I'd like to think, you know, they're just being sniper buddies. It's lovely. And the game also maxes out your heavy weapon ammo and your medigel there, which is very bloody useful indeed. Now, guys, first things first, I would like... Yeah, Miranda, you stick with the Locust. Grunt, you stick with the Pulse Rifle. We're going up against Biotic Shields, therefore rapid fire weapons will be good, but I'd like to keep my sniper rifle out for the moment anyway. And everyone, go over to the warp ammo, which should make everyone very, very powerful indeed. We are in position. Exterior temperature slightly elevated. No obstructions detected. Second team, are you in position? In position. Meet you on the other side of those doors. So that's Legion in event, and Garrus ready to push in to make a bit of a diversion. Lovely. So in we go, and we're probably going to run into our first opposition very, very shortly indeed. 
over here. Hello, guys. Good. You are just popping like crazy. And yes, indeed, those guys are going to go down very, very fast indeed. More guys coming in. Now we just need to pick these guys off. Lovely. They are going down very quickly indeed. And yeah, I can snipe these guys off and do very, very good damage very quickly. You can see how well Grunt can do. He can just stand in the front lines and murder these bastards. Basically, we just need to cut through them very quickly, which in all fairness, snipers are very, very good at doing, because eventually Legion will call for help, and we've got to respond to him when he does. And then, oh yes, Grunt doing so damn well. So, Garrus taking heavy fire, but doing fine. And we see over there, that big old button. When Legion calls for help, you need to make it to that button in a certain period of time. If you don't, it's not about him dying. It's purely a matter of uh, the mission automatically fails if you don't get to him in time, if I recall correctly. So, because he's loyal and he's a good tech specialist, I don't think he actually can die. I think he's fine. So, the game's going to introduce that for us in a second now. There, over by the ventilation shaft. That valve should open the gate. So we can literally see Legion up there. Now this one, it's fine. We just need to remove the heat exchanger. Um, later, he'll start calling for help while there's still enemies in the room. And the temperature will start rising, so we'll be on a time limit. The first time I ever played to this game, by the way, I sent Tali in there. Because I thought, okay, well, I trust her. But I was also romancing Tali at the same time. So when Tali starts yelling, Shepard, it's too hot. I'm like, I, I got really upset. That was incredibly stressful. Hello there, guys, by the way. You're going to die now. I'm just going to hide around the corner for one second, please. Go invisible for a second. So they change target and just go for the headshots. And there's Harbinger, which is fine because we can take out large parts of his health immediately. Hit him with the heavy warps and whatever. And then just keep going for Harbinger. And that's a total miss. Well done, me. Let's take out this guy instead. Just get him out of the way. Headshot one shots these guys. Lovely. And you're almost dead already. Heavy incinerate, is that good enough for you? Lovely. I think we're just swapping heavy incinerates right now. And I didn't reload. The story of this entire run through. And I'm pretty sure Grunt just murdered him. There we are. Temperature is rising to dangerous levels. So now we've got to get to that switch before that happens. And trust me, if you don't know whether or not people can die and you're romancing Tali, and Tali is the best thing in the universe, and it's my favourite romance in all of video game history, and Tali's crying out for help, that gets really stressful really fast. By the way, get out of the flipping... Miranda! You're ruining the shot! And headshot, lovely. As long as I can keep up enough ammo here. That's another harbinger. That's no good. And this is where things start getting stressful because the time is starting to run down and he is actually calling out for help and that is mission failure. So you kind of, you know, you do just have to take your time to make sure you get this right and, you know, potentially being... There you go. I'm pretty sure I just hit you. Once we've got the biotic barrier off Harbinger, however, it's pretty quick to just nail him. There's plenty of ammo floating around. We've got the valve open, which is marvellous. Path is open, moving along. This first bit is pretty difficult. It's actually one of the more difficult bits of the entire mission. And then of course we've got the fourth valve right here. That one is not dangerous in the slightest. We'll just hit that. Make sure we have cleared it. Actually, you know what? We may as well just take out anyone round here first because we've got plenty of time before we have to go back down to that other one. So I may as well clear out some of this room immediately. So there we go. Whenever I need to, I will just go down and don't worry about Harbinger. He's well back at the minute. I'm going to go focus on the other guys. Instead, let's not worry about you. Where are the other people? There's another one right there. Lovely. And Specialist is in danger. And just leave everyone who is basically not Harbinger. Because uh, once we've taken care of everyone else, there's no one else for Harbinger to regenerate into. There we are. Specialist is in danger. And that's everyone else. I'm not going to go and help out you. Lovely. Remove that. Legion is fine. Now I can just hide around the corner. Grunt went down. Blimey, that's unusual. And now I can just finish off you. And as a result, there's no one else for you to regenerate into. And I know the room is empty because, uh, yeah, Grunt got back up. Grunt dying. Now that's something you don't see every day. Yeah, this is something that's very useful to do, by the way, which is, ah, good. We can actually take out, uh, we can actually do a fair bit of damage to Harbinger right here, which is marvellous. I'm just going to fall back slightly at the minute. We've... 
I think Miranda just blocked me from jumping over cover there. Well flipping done. We've got plenty of time for now at least. And you can go down to a headshot. Still plenty of ammo in the sniper rifle. I see one of you over there. And you can go down as well. Take everyone out before Harbinger if it's at all possible. Which it very much is in this mission. And Harbinger will go down in a second. Ah, oh, the Geth Pulse rifle with the right hand mine. It just tears him apart. I'm pretty sure that's everyone dead. Specialist is in danger, but we've got plenty of time to get to him. Legion is all right. Right, now, just make sure everything's okay. I don't think we've really got time to push ahead and deal with any more people, to be honest. There's a bit too much between me and there. Don't worry, Legion. We'll help you out. Everything's good. Five valves open. Moving straight on. And here's the sixth valve right here. Fine. So in which case, this is a good valve to leave. This is a good trick, by the way. Ignore these easy valves and just go ahead and take out a few of the guys who are ahead of you before that happens. Right, another one goes down. We've got our first assassins by the looks of things. Just got to keep an eye on. Yep, there we are. Um, Could you just stun him for a second, please? I'm just going to back out of here because that assassin's a little bit on the dangerous side. Uh, everyone else just take out. Yeah, I know your systems can't withstand something, something, something. I think someone's killed that guy. So we've got now. There we go. No one else hits the valves, by the way. No one else really thinks to bother doing that, which of course makes this room an awful lot easier. So we've got one clutch drone right there. And then, bloody hell, come on. There we go. And then we've got one more assassin somewhere over nearby. Hello over there. And where are you? Oh, I see you over there. Lovely. Assassins are a little bit on the tough side. So we may as well hit them with everything we've got. Lovely. That is apparently I've just picked up. No, no, I haven't picked up warp mastery. I'm just getting close to it. Headshot does very nicely. Root is blocked once more. We've got plenty of time there. And go for Harbinger if we can. Guys, this is where things are getting a little bit on the tricky side. Because, yeah, you're kind of being distracted. You're being hit by a lot of bullets, which means your aim is a lot kind of... It's a lot tricky to nail the people you want to be nailing. There's a lot of collectors here. And then we just need to basically start... You know what? Slam that guy. Yes, we used slam. It was worth it. Beautiful. We've got, like, enough time for now. But time is ticking by. We cannot wait too long to save Legion. Otherwise, he will run into trouble. That was a good headshot at least. Lovely. And then that's another person down. You over there. You who have... Yeah, you know what? Let's try uh, slam on you. See if it does anything good. Marvellous. And then that is Harbinger dead. But that's me out of sniper ammo for now. Now take out that guy before he becomes Harbinger. And there we are. The Khan effects works very, very nicely. We're in a bit of trouble here. 29 seconds. Oh, you see, that's unfortunate. That just got there in time. But we can make a run for the button pretty easily. So, just everyone focus on him. 21 seconds to go. Not too bad yet, at least. Hit him with a concussive. Why not? There we go. And now, now we should be all right. Because armored is just so easy to strip off. And there we are. 14 seconds to go. Let that go by. I think we're done. Yep, we're good. That is 7 out of 8. And there's the final one right there. Yes, we are indeed nearing the end. I can see on the bottom of my screen it says 7 out of 8. I need to find some ammo. If at all possible, I'm a bit concerned by the lack of it, to be honest. How much have I got left at this point? Oh, good. I'm back up to full. I'm not sure how that happened. It just sort of did. And there is the final heat exchanger. And that should be the job done. Lovely. count on you. Shepard, you need to see this. And of course, if you hadn't chosen your people as carefully, people would have ended up dead there as well. Looks like one of the missing colonists. The 
There's more over here. God, she's still alive. Chuck was... Are you okay? Shepard, you... You came for us. Now, the amount of crew that survived is based on how quickly after your crew was kidnapped, you came to rescue them. If you go immediately, you save the entirety of the crew. If you go between, I think it's between one and three missions, so if you need to do some, like, you know, some more loyalty missions, for example, before you decide to come along, then as a result of that, you end up with half of the crew dead, but half of them survive. And I believe the important ones do live, so, like, name characters like Kelly and Doc Chakwas. Interestingly, if you bum around for ages and don't bother coming here for absolutely flipping ages and do, like, all the loyalty missions and do over three missions before you come and rescue the crew. Everyone dies, I believe with the exception of Dr. Chakwas. Dr. Chakwas is apparently functionally immortal. The Reaper's like, you know, they tried to melt her down, they just couldn't. She was just too amazingly tough, which is kind of impressive. The reason is because in a moment I'm going to be asked to choose someone to lead the crew back to the ship. Now that has to happen, so therefore one person has to survive to be led back to the ship. So if you wait too long, you end up with this slightly weird situation where you send away one of your team to escort a single doctor back to the ship. But okay, that's just how it goes. One person has to be able to do that because that's part of the game. No one gets left behind. Thank God you got here in time. A few more seconds and... I don't even want to think about it. The colonists were... processed. Those swarms of little robots, they... melted their bodies into grey liquid and pumped it through these tubes. Why are they doing this? What are they doing with our genetic material? I don't know. I'm just glad you got here before it happened to us. So are we. But we still have a job to do. We've done well so far. Let's hope we can finish the job. Joker, can you get a fix on our position? Roger that, Commander. All those tubes lead into the main control room right above you. The route is blocked by a security door, but there's another chamber that runs parallel to the one you're in. I cannot recommend that. Thermal emissions suggest the chamber is overrun with seeker swarms. Morton's countermeasure cannot protect you against so many at once. What about biotics? Could we create a biotic field to keep them from getting near us? Yes, I think it may be possible. I wouldn't be able to protect everyone, but we might be able to get a small team through if they stayed close. I could do it too. In theory, any biotic could handle it. Shepard, who do you want to maintain the field? Now this I love as a way of kind of telling us something about Miranda's personality, which is Miranda cannot do it. Despite what she says, if Miranda tries to do it, even if she's loyal, she will end up dead because she's not a good enough biotic. Miranda's personality may well be to just stand up and say, oh yeah, I'm perfect, I'm so flawless, I'm so great, I'm amazing, I can totally do anything any other biotic can. No! No, of course not! Like, a ridiculously super powerful biotic like a matriarch who's a Justicar or Jack is of course a better option. Vastly more powerful than Miranda, but Miranda's too proud to admit it. And yeah, it's a bit of a false friend in the script, because if you do pick Miranda, she does end up dead. And I think I will go for a matriarch and Justicar. That strikes me as probably a little bit more powerful. I mean, Jack, it's hard to get a read on her power levels. In cutscene, she's amazing. In the game, she's terrible. So let's go for Samara instead. Samara and I will take a small team through the Seeker Swarms. The rest of you provide a diversion by going through the main passage. We'll open the security doors from the other side and meet you there. Who should lead the diversion team? And we gave Garrus one chance. Why not send Miranda on this occasion? I'll keep the defenders busy while you slip in the back. What about me and the rest of the crew, Shepard? We're in no shape to fight. Commander, we have enough systems back online to do a pickup, but we need to land back from your position. We can't afford to go back, Shepard. Not now. And indeed, I will indeed have someone escort you. You'll never make it without help. I'll send someone with you. 
Now this is where the game starts getting interesting and mathematical, because at the end of this, when me and my team of two go and fight the final boss, the rest of the team basically is supposed to like, you know, covering our backs. They just have to hold the lines, I believe, how the game is referring to it. Now, whether everyone survives holding the line or not is determined by how tough the line is, where each character is assigned a numerical value based on how good they are at holding the line. So for example, Garrus is extremely good at holding the line because he has experience holding out against a large number of people because he's a sniper and he can just take cover and he's good at that sort of thing. Some characters, however, are much worse at holding the line. So for example, Kasumi is not good at holding the line. That's not her job. She's a spy and a thief and an infiltrator. Like, holding the line against waves of enemies is not really what she does. So she has a very low numerical value assigned to her. The game figures out what the average numerical value of all the people left behind to hold the line is and uses that to determine whether they all survive or whether a certain number of people die and then there's a given order people die if anyone dies at all. Now people you have in your team don't apply to that average and whoever you send back with these crew members to escort them back to the ship also will not apply because they'll be taken out of this mission. So you can actually improve your chances of getting a perfect ending by picking someone who's not good in a straight up fight if you don't want to have them with you later. So as a result, the person I'm going to choose right now is Morden. Morden is simply not good at holding the line and I'm not going to be needing him later in this mission. So therefore I'm sending him back out of the way because that will actually improve my chances of getting a perfect ending. Joker, need location of landing zone. We'll meet you there. We've all got our assignments. Let's move out. Oh, and of course, the person you actually do send to escort the crew, they need to be loyal. If they're loyal, they and the crew survive. If they're not loyal, things go a bit wrong. And of course, we've got rid of Morden right there. Morden is no longer there. And interestingly, we've actually got his dossier back as a placeholder asset in place of him. So now we can now be told he's currently operating a medical clinic in the slums of Omega. He's not game. I promise he's not. Still, for this room, Grunt seems to do very, very solidly indeed, and sure, Thane, why not? You're pretty powerful too. And here we are inside the Seeker Swarm room here with Samara, and I pick up a ton of Paragon for helping out those guys. Of course, Samara can do a very good job making this little cool- I love this biotic bubble. This is really, really cool, this biotic bubble. So we basically just move through the room, Samara will occasionally stop and we can tell him when we're ready to move on. Of course, at various points during the room, we'll stop at areas where there's some chest high walls and when we get to those areas, we'll do a little fight. Samara won't actually help out, she's just focusing on keeping the bubble up. Then we kill some people and then we continue once everyone is dead. And now Samara just takes cover up here and we can basically just start picking apart those guys as we wish. Just go for the headshots, take out Harbinger. Go for everyone who's not Harbinger first, if you can, in the slightest. And then, of course, sure, why not go for a heavy concussive blast. Good, good, good. And then just keep taking out these drones. Just keep on the sniper shots. Because we're above them, even when they're in cover, we can take them out pretty easily. And, of course, eventually, sooner or later, Harbinger will get sufficiently close to you. You need to take him out. Once he is, make sure. Yep, indeed, we took out everyone before Harbinger. Like, earlier in the game, when Harbinger's a real risk of just murdering your entire team, like, it's pretty important to prioritise him before he murders you. But at this point in the game, you want to prioritise everyone who's not Harbinger, because then you just take away the people who Harbinger could become later. And now we just... Thane, will you stop teleporting, please? Also, everyone onto the right ammo type, if you'd be so kind. Thank you. And indeed, potentially we've got some more people coming in, or are those people heading over to Miranda's team? You can't always tell. Miranda, of course, yeah, competent leader. Everyone's fine in Miranda's team. Dead ahead. Dead ahead, you say? Ah, and we've actually got Husk. Shame I don't have Miranda with me, in fact. She's good at this sort of thing. But you know who else is good at dealing with Husk? Why, of course, it's Grunt, who I've got with me. He can just charge in and murder these guys. So we can just take out these guys, no problem at all. A few people will crawl up here. I'd forgotten there were actually these guys here, to be honest. I'd completely forgotten that. But uh, that's fine. As they come up, we can take care of them. We've got a few people coming in, but nothing major. I can take a headshot at you. Oh, you saw that, right? Oh, by the way, um, you can leave the biotic bubble. That is allowed. But if you do, you will potentially run into a little bit of trouble. So uh, be careful of that. And... Harbage is literally tanking for his own allies. That's kind of annoying. I'm just going to get out of the way for a second. They've got... Oh, hello. What was that? No, I need, to, I need to get in cover for just a second, please. Where is... Where's Harbinger? Hang on. Yep, get my... Oh, blimey. Was that Grunt dead? Grunt dead. That doesn't happen very often. Grunt, back up with you, please. Thank you. And then... Oh, hello. Uh-oh. This isn't good at all. This isn't good at all. You're dead. Good, good. All right, last one goes down, all clear. Yeah, this room's a little bit more awkward just because, yeah, it's a bit difficult to know exactly where you want to hide. We're down to six medigel, that's not so bad, and I'm very low on ammo as well. 
Only three at the minute in the sniper rifle. And plenty more ammo sitting around too. Good, good. Hold this position until you're ready to move. That's fine. Ah, it's more husks. Good. Husks are the very easy bit to take care of. Ah, we've got scions though. Right, okay. Invisible and just headshots on the... Nope, never mind. Grunt, I'm leaving that to you. I need to prioritise the scion. So Grunt, if you can take care of that, that'll be... Is the scion... The scion appears to be running away from me. Well, that works for me. Right, okay. I need to hide. Okay. Grunt, where's... Where's Grunt? Yeah, Grunt, if any point you want, you would like to just, like, you know, charge in and murder, like, all of them in a single blow, which is that thing you do do on a regular basis. That would just be marvellous, Grunt. Come on, Grunt, 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 Grunt. What are you doing? Grunt, come on. Hide. There we go. Where's... Is Grunt down? No, Grunt's not down. He's just... He's outside of the bubble. Oh, well, this has gone wrong. No, sadly, I'm pretty sure I just got nailed by the Scion there. I shouldn't have focused on the sign. I should have taken the husks out first to make sure they were safe and dead. Right, I'm going over to the particle beam to see if maybe that helps us out a little bit. I feel like, yeah, a little bit of heavy weapon fire could certainly help out. I need my team to stay back while I just pick off some husks. In a moment, she'll start running and enemies will start popping in. And if I just can take out a couple of husks that move straight onto the scion while staying towards the rear, that should be alright, by the way. Don't forget the ammo, just hiding around the corner there. Oops, stay out of there, by the way. And, no, guys, guys, do not, do not block my shot. I'm a sniper. This is kind of important that you don't do that. Right, blow you up. That does damage to you. Take out the Sci- Oh, the Scion is so resistant to that. It's ridiculous. It's actually, I'm almost certainly better not doing that. Uh, blow up there, blow up the abomination, because that will do damage to the other guy. I need you to, oh, flipping heck, take out you, and this is not working. I just need Grunt to get a good shot in at those guys. That's it. That's all I need. I just need Grunt to do a decent job against these guys, but he's just refusing to do it. Right. Are you dead yet? You are almost dead. Right. Now there's, okay, now there's nothing but you, I think. Oh, look, there's flipping more yet, mind. They're both dead. Get them back up and then hope I can just basically get invinci invisibility back in time. Right now. Yep, yeah, fine. And then, ow, he did his close range thing, which is really annoying. So actually is not good for me. And then just focus on, just keep, get him down, 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 go invisible. And then hope he goes for something else. And okay, <laughs> that's not fun. I've just burnt, like, most of my heavy weapon ammo. I'm really hoping there's a good chance for a top up there. But, yeah, I just, like, had, at the beginning of that fight, I had no sniper rifle ammo. So, I feel like, I really had to it. That was really tough. Like, because the battlefield's so small. Because if you step outside this, you get, like, attacked by the Seek Swarm. And, like, your shield and health go down really quickly. So, you, like, you're stuck in this really tiny area. Which really does not suit fighting husks and scions. However, I think... That's it, because, yeah, that hallway at the end there, that's the end of it. So I believe now we are done with fighting in here, which is a relief. And now I just hope we can top up our heavy weapon ammo before the end. No, 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 we've got more yet. We've got more husks, but they go down pretty quickly to the Carnifex. Carnifex works pretty nicely against these things. Interestingly, none of the enemies go for, uh... Oi, you get... No, bad husk, bad husk. You get beaten to death now. And indeed, Samara indicating this is apparently a very difficult thing to do, keeping this shield up, which is why Miranda can't do it. Have we got one more fight to do here? Nope, we're into the cutscene. Good. Hold on. We're almost there. We must go quickly, Shepard. All right, let's move. And if you have picked Miranda or anyone who's not a dedicated biotech at this point, this is the moment they die. But instead, because we picked a good biotic, she now does this super awesome badass thing. Yep, yeah, both her and Jack do the same move, but it's certainly pretty damn cool. And there's just a couple of collectors hanging at the back there like, did you just see what she did? Yeah, I just saw what she did. You know what? Let's not fight them. We're at the door. They've got us pinned down. We're coming. Just hold on. Get this door open. And Miranda gets hit, but I'm ready for action. Commander. She's all right. Joker, are you at the rendezvous point? I'm here, Commander. Chuck was and the rest of the crew just showed up. Morton's group just arrived, Shepard. 
no casualties. Excellent. Now let's make it count. Edie, what's our next step? There should be some nearby platforms that will take you to the main control console. From there, you can overload the system and destroy the base. Commander, you got a problem. Hostiles massing just outside the door. Won't be long till I bust through. And there we are. This is where we reach the moment of hold the line. A rear guard could defend this position and keep the collectors from overwhelming us. Pick a team to go with you, Shepard. Everyone else can bunker down here and cover your back. And now I've got to pick a team. Now, bear in mind, as I was saying, everyone's got a nice numerical value assigned to how good they are at holding the line. Zaid, great at holding the line. Garrus, great at holding the line. Grunt, great at holding the line. So those are the sorts of guys you want to be leaving here. Legion, perfectly competent. Jacob and Thane, great. People who aren't holding the line... Kasumi, Jack's not great at holding the line, Morden we already got rid of. I think Tali's part of that group too. Sadly, poor old Tali. Tali is like the Shadow Broker does say to her if you bring her along. Tali is just... she's not as skilled as the rest of them. And aside from taking out Geth, which she is competent at, she's just otherwise not very good. She's not a competent leader, she's not a great member of your team. She's not good at holding the line when you leave her to deal with things on her own. She's just... She's a great member of Shepard's team and it's great that she has such character growth. I like the fact she doesn't just become some superhuman badass off screen. You know, Rex just becomes King of the Krogan off screen and Ashley and Caden, whichever one of them survives in Mass Effect 3, become the second human spectre. Tali, though she does of course get into a position of elevated authority in Mass Effect 3, you feel like she's not comfortable with it and she doesn't always make the right calls. I just love Tali as a character. She's wonderful. So, the person I would like to bring first is Miranda. Miranda has been here. Plus, Miranda, you get some extra fun bonus dialogue at the end of the game if she's part of your team. The team members you bring with you, if they're loyal, they survive. That's it. And I would also like to try bringing with me Kasumi. She's not good at holding the line, but she is very, very powerful indeed. Now, Overload may not be useful for what I'm about to do, but the Deadly Shadow Strike is powerful. It's very, very powerful indeed. I mean, she's certainly better than Jack, and in all fairness, like, 99% of the damage that's going to get done is going to get done by me anyway, so... I feel like her Shadow Strike, together with Miranda's abilities and Miranda's bonus to my damage, we should be fine, and that should mean the rest of the guys, obviously in the background now, are going to be holding the line, and that should be a strong enough team that we do this without casualties. I really bloody hope so anyway. I'm ready, Commander. Me too. Anything to say before we do this? The Collectors, the Reapers, they aren't a threat to us. They're a threat to everything, everyone. Those are the lives we're fighting for. That's the scale. It's been a long journey, and no one's coming out without scars. But it all comes down to this moment. We win or lose it all in the next few minutes. Make me proud. Make yourselves proud. Well said. Let's go finish this. And we hit level 29 as well. Marvelous. In comes some new people. The game has... Wait, is that... Yes, the game has completely topped up my particle beam. Well, that's a bloody relief. Now, what do I want you to be doing? Probably it's better for everyone else to be on locust while I'm on sniper duties. That's probably for the best. Yes, indeed. That's 805 of the heavy weapon ammo. And indeed, get in there and... No, total miss. Good start. Right, now get in and take some people out before they become flipping harbinger. Right, next one goes down. Collector drone, final one. Let's take him out nice and quick. Come on, and basically once you've cleared out everyone on a platform, a new platform gets sent in. Now, everyone, just be careful here. You can, by the way, take these guys out as a sniper before they even make a touch, which is great, because until the platform lands, they don't move, they don't take proper cover, and you can take out a couple of people who could become Harbinger before they even get the opportunity to. Of course, things are going to get more dangerous later when the flipping Scion starts showing up. You're a collected guardian, so you're a bit more tanky. That's fine. I think I've got a shot at your... Ooh! You got your shoot up just in the nick of time there, you lucky bastard, but not anymore, you don't. Right, now of course we push forward while this is all happening, because more are going to come in, and as more come in, we've got a good opportunity to nail them as they do. In comes some more here, and there's our first harbinger of this fight. That's fine, let's go for the person behind him first. Oh, that was just a drone as well, that's fine. 
Uh, fortunately, because there's like lots of steps or whatever, he kind of struggles to get to you. Uh, hit him with the Deadly Shadow Strike and Heavy Warp both, please. Lovely. I'm going to go towards the back. That's one person dead. That's all right. And then he gets me out of cover. Get back in cover in a hurry. Lovely. That person is in the background. And fortunately, I think we just... Oh, yeah. I think Asumi just took out, like, his entire biotic shield with a single shadow strike. That's really nice. And then we've just got two. Oh, we're out of ammo for the sniper rifle. That's a shame. But that squad warp ammo tears apart armor just as fast as biotics. And I'll tell you what, my pistol will do a good job, too. In comes some more. Now, this is where things get tricky, because at this point, I'm pretty sure it's Scions coming in. Uh, is there a Scion there? There might be. And, well, there's another Harbinger, at least. No Scions yet. Uh, but, yeah, I don't have any Sniper ammo anymore. There's definitely one Assassin in there, but doesn't have a good shot at me. Which is, no, get out of the way, you stupid shield. Uh, Kasumi, you're way too far forward. You're scarily far forward. Luckily, if she's in trouble, you can get her out of the fight by using Deadly Shadow Strikes. Then she literally disappears and reappears later, which kind of works. And then get out of there for a second. No, 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 no. Ooh, just to buy myself a second there. Right, what did you just do to him? Yeah, you do a really good job, and she's nearly ready for another one as well. Right, just stun that guy for one second. I just need to get my health back. And then, oh, flipping heck. Keep my head down for a second. Where's Harbinger? Because he can knock me out of cover. Right, I think we're good right now. I need to get rid of that Harbinger. He's too close. And there we go. I don't think I've got my ammo type on at the minute. No, I don't. I need a 35% ammo boost. He's actually walking away from me, which works for me. And you know, get rid of that bloody shield if you'd be so kind. I'm on fire. And then we'll just uh, get back into cover now. No one's flanking me too hard. Can somebody please take out that bloody assassin? All right, Kasumi, this is what you're for. Just get over there, take care of him. If Harbinger's not pulling towards me and he does get confused by the loudest a little bit, that works for me. Who else is left? We've got one person over there. Yep, that's fine. One collector guardian. And I tell you what. Hit him with slam! Why the hell not, eh? Oh, I'm in fire again. And I think you managed to... Yeah, that didn't finish him off. Slam is so feeble on anything versus Hush. It's There's another assassin over there. And I think he's dead. There's the Scions. That's the Scions. This is where you really wish you had flipping sniper ammo left. And you very often don't. Uh, the only advantage you've got, by the way, is if you can take care of their armor ahead of time, what you can do is... Uh, you can... There we go. So what I can do now with that abomination is I can slam him with Miranda. And if we're lucky, he'll actually miss the platform. No, he did actually make it to the platform. Let's just take out the abominations first. Um, and now this is why it's good we've got Miranda. Because we've got the slam to deal with them. Because those are annoying. Stay on the move. And then just focus on those bastards. Just stay away. Okay. Another abomination means another slam. That's the abominations taken care of. Now, these guys are at a distance from us, which does work at least. They've decided to pay attention to Miranda. I don't know why, but they're not shooting at me yet. Kasumi, not, not right now, please. I'm pretty sure I just heard one coming in. I'm focusing on this one over here. Uh, yep, he's down to almost half. I've got nothing for him, to be honest. Let's just do with Deadly Shadow Strike and Heavy Warp. And heavy incinerate. Screw it. I'm pretty sure they're shooting at me. Stay back from them. And obviously the travel distance of their warp works for me. I'm pretty sure she just murdered one of them. Or came very, very close. Uh, no, she didn't. She just stunned it temporarily. But it'll do. Oh, that's coming for me. Kasumi is still alive, which is marvellous. And as soon as only one of them is left, life is a lot easier. Just hit with everything we've got there. Is that one of them dead? Yep, that's one of them burnt to death. Unfortunately, these guys, when you've got some distance, are not so dangerous at all. Now we can basically just knacker him. And whenever you kind of hear his attack coming in, just move. And it's not so bad. Just hit him with another Shadow Strike and Heavy Warp and Incinerate. And that should do good work there. Just wait to see how powerful that is. And that is... Oh, you see, look at that. And it also stuns him as well. And it forces him to use his... Oh, that almost hit me. It forces him to use his um, I'm going to attack anyone who's around me ability. But I don't think he can actually kill Kasumi when she's teleporting away anyway. So it's actually really good. <laughs> yeah. These guys are ridiculous on insanity. The amount of flipping... I think I made through that whole thing without being hit. That's a really difficult thing right there. And that is now the end of everything aside from the final boss. And I really hope it gives me another ammo top up before that. Otherwise, I'm going into the final boss with four shots and a sniper rifle. And that's about flipping it. Well, one more thing here. That's the downside of playing as a sniper, of course. You uh, basically, you know, you stay at the back in cover. 
And as a result of that, you run out of ammo and you can't really run forward to grab more. Still, nothing we can do here. We just have to follow those tubes for which the grey matter of pulp tumours was pumped down here to the centre to figure out what it was being used for. This is it. All the tubes lead to this spot. Edie, what can you tell us? What are they doing? The tubes are feeding into some kind of superstructure. It is emitting both organic and non-organic energy signatures. Given these readings, it must be massive. Shepard, if my calculations are correct, the superstructure is a reaper. Not just any reaper. Human reaper. Precisely. It appears the collectors have processed tens of thousands of humans. Significantly more will be required to complete the reaper. I find this thing so bloody confusing. Because my initial understanding of this was the Reapers come around every cycle, basically figure out which species are good species, harvest that species, make a Reaper out of them, and then naff off again and wait for some new species to show up that they can use to make new Reapers in future. And like, that's what this looks like ahead of me. But then every single Reaper we see in Mass Effect 3 at the end of Mass Effect 2, they all look the same. They all look like the Cuttlefish. And we know why they look like the Cuttlefish, because of Mass Effect 3's Leviathan DLC, which is they all look like Cuttlefish, because the creatures that created them were basically just big Cuttlefish. They all look like their original creators. So, in which case, why does this one not look like a Cuttlefish? Why does it look like a human? Are we supposed to assume that like, within the Cuttlefish shell, there's like, a little reaper that's piloting it that's this thing that's still huge but it looks more like whatever the reapers harvested to make it like i just don't understand what this thing is and why we don't see one of these for say why don't we see the prothean reaper for example i just don't understand it's so confusing they're building it to look like a human why it appears that a reaper's shape is based upon the species used to create it in this one instance and only this one instance it's so weird reapers are machines why do they need humans at all? Incorrect. Reapers are sapient constructs, a hybrid of organic and inorganic material. The exact construction methods are unclear, but it seems probable that the reapers absorb the essence of a species, utilizing it in their reproduction process. How many more humans do you think they'd try to take? Millions. Perhaps more. Impossible to know for certain. This reaper appears to be in a very early stage of development. So it's not alive yet. We can still stop it from being created? The process can be stopped, but it is unclear exactly how much it has developed. I cannot, for example, tell you if it has awareness. What do the collectors gain by turning humans into this Reaper shell? They may be facilitating the Reaper equivalent of reproduction, or it may serve another purpose. I do not have the data to speculate further. However, it is clear that the collectors are merely pawns. The technology and ability needed to create this reaper is not their own. It is likely that different species construct each reaper. In this case, the collectors provide the labor. This thing is an abomination. Edie, how do we destroy it? The large tubes injecting the fluid are a weak structural link. Destroying them should cause the supports to collapse and the reaper to fall. Give us a minute, Edie. We gotta take care of some old friends first. Enemies incoming! And of course we do have more coming in yet. Oh, it hasn't given me a top up of ammo. Luckily, I've saved the uh, the particle beam, but I do have the small problem that yeah, right now I don't actually have much in the way of ammo at all, and I've got a really terrible shot from here, by the way. <laughs> Hello there. Oh, and uh, I think yeah, I nailed that shot just right. In you come. Hello over there. Good. I get a headshot at the assassin. That's marvelously good news. It's moments like this I wish I actually had push on the team, but sadly I don't. I've just got slam, which is far less useful. Uh, probably just finish that guy off because he's very irritating and you've started to go into cover. That's fine. We've got a harbinger coming in. One drone over there. Finish him off. And then we've got one. Is the assassin dead? No, you just survived. Oh, no, no, you didn't. That wasn't the assassin. That was just a drone. Fine. That drone over there probably can be just... Ah, I can't quite get the angle right. And by the way, harbinger's about to murder me. Can someone just stun him for a second? Thank you. Lovely. I'm just going to need to get round here out of the bloody hell. Will you stop it? Yeah, I don't have enough ammo for any of this. 
Now, obviously, we need to take out these bastards. As soon as he's dead, we will get our chance at the Reaper itself. We will, There we go. Now, go straight over to the collector Particle Beam and... Go, 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 get it out and go straight over to the second. You can take out two in a single round if you're quick and you know it's about to happen. And that's what we want to do next time too. The next group is coming from over there. I want to be there for on this side as soon as possible. I'm just going invisible for a second. Is there a good spot to... This will do. This will have to do to be honest. Uh, I've got one shot left in the sniper rifle. Spot on. No harbinger. Yeah. Oh. I wasn't expecting that. I didn't realise I was so low on health. Right, prepare this. This final shot should do it. The Deadly Shadow Strike should finish him off, hopefully. Or most, at least. Okay, he's dead. Prepare for the... Go for it. Go for it. And I think you can actually get a third if you're really lucky and fast. But I didn't quite get fast enough there. But I think you can pick off a third. Right, okay. We know where they're coming from this time. This time... Being covered nice and early. Oh, I'm really way too close to them. <laughs> oh, that's no good in the slightest. Right, go for the Guardian with the Deadly Shadow Strike. And who else is up there? We've got a Collector Drone. Don't worry about that for now. Let's go over to Sniper Rifle. Sure. Stay invisible as far as we can. Go invisible and go for... Oh, oh no, I had a shot at you. I just didn't recognise that was your face. Right, slam for that guy. We just need to take out a few more of them. Miranda's down, which is a little bit on the irritating side. And there we are. I was thinking, I bet I haven't reloaded there. Haven't reloaded this time, however, because I can't reload. So I'm kind of out of everything. You're dead. Make sure you both go down before you become Harbinger. There's one Guardian left, which means if he does become Harbinger, that's far from the worst thing in the world, to be honest. But actually, this is almost weirdly simple so far. Right, take out his barrier. Get Miranda back up. There we go. Medigel. And now hit that guy with the Deadly Shadow Strike. We just need him to go down nice and quick. There we are. Go for him. There we are. He's almost dead now. Deadly Shadow Strike. As soon as that hits, that means the other two tubes will open. And that should be your lot. And then, yep. And now that is him fallen. That is stage one. You can do it in two rounds. I think I have at one point seen someone do it in one round, but it really requires some excellent reflexes of being in just the right position. But that is not it done. That is just the first phase. Shepard to ground team. Status report. It's phase. We are holding, but they keep coming. A quick exit is preferable. Head to the Normandy. Joker, prep the engines. I'm about to overload this place and blow it sky high. Roger that, Commander. Signal from the elusive man. He's patching it through. Shepard, you've done the impossible. I was part of a team. Some of them gave their lives for this mission. I know. Their sacrifice will not be forgotten. You did what you had to do, and you acquired the collector base. I'm looking at the schematics Edie uploaded. A timed radiation pulse would kill the remaining collectors leave the machinery and technology intact. This is our chance, Shepard. They were building a Reaper. That knowledge, that framework could save us. Nope, sorry, this place is an abomination. They liquefied people. Turned them into something horrible. We have to destroy the base. Don't be short-sighted. Our best chance against the Reapers is to turn their own resources against them. I'm not so sure. Seeing it firsthand, using anything from this base seems like a betrayal. If we ignore this opportunity, that would be a betrayal. They were working directly with the Collectors. Who knows what information is buried there? This base is a gift. We can't just destroy it. And how am I supposed to trust you? You're completely ruthless. The next thing I know, you'll be wanting to grow your own Reaper. My goal is to save humanity from the Reapers, at any cost. I've never hidden that from you. Imagine how many lives could be saved if we keep this base intact and use its knowledge to thwart the Reapers. Imagine the lives that will be lost if we don't. Nope, not a chance. Do not trust the elusive man. No matter what kind of technology we might find, it's not worth it. Shepard, you died fighting for what you believed. I brought you back so you could keep fighting. Some would say what we did to you was going too far, but look what you've accomplished. I didn't discard you because I knew your value. Don't be so quick to discard this facility. Think of the potential. Nope, we're not doing it. We'll fight and win without it. 
I won't let fear compromise who I am. Miranda, do not let Shepard destroy the base. Or what? You'll replace me next? I gave you an order, Miranda. I noticed. Consider this my resignation. Shepard, think about what's at stake, about everything Cerberus has done for you. You... Let's move. We got ten minutes before the reactor overloads and blows this whole station apart. And as it turns out, the Reaper thing isn't quite done yet. So what we've got to do now is take out its various glowy bits. And it moves around a lot and it also has a great big flashy attack thing. It is very difficult to nail this thing, so you've got to be shooting it in just the right place. Now, I'm not sure whether there's actually a real time limit, by the way. There's no one on screen, so I'm not sure there is actually a real time limit. This guy just basically moves around. If you can get a shot at his chest, that's often the easiest bit. He'll sometimes keep his eyes still for a little bit, but it's so difficult um, to hit him. It's so flipping hard to do. Now the problem is if you get hit by his attack, it really does last for ages and it drains your health and stops your shields coming back. So you do not want to get hit by his attack. If you do, you're screwed for a while because you just can't pop out. Now I've got three shots with a sniper rifle, not exactly spectacular. The slow-mo from the sniper rifle will at least help out a little bit. There you go, that works a little bit better. That's definitely a little bit easier, but I'm going to run out of ammo for my sniper rifle very quickly. But, uh, yeah, it'll do for at least a little bit. We've got maybe, what, like the fifth of its health down, and I'm almost out of ammo for the sniper rifle, and I can't see any more. But that thing just keeps popping up. Fortunately, it is on its own. Just wait for it to hold still for one second. Because occasionally it will just... There we go. Got a good shot in at the eye. Anything that's glowing. I think the mouth counts as well, to be honest. Uh, probably. Just a basic shot with the... Yeah, that's it. The pistol actually works pretty darn well, to be honest. It's attack is stupidly powerful, but actually pretty easy to avoid as well. Make sure we've got the right ammo on, by the way. I think you can also use abilities. And of course, because you can pause target abilities, that actually works pretty well. So as a result, like, yeah, this area up here, I think you are allowed to target that. I don't think you can hit it with a shadow strike, but you can hit it with the heavy warp and the incinerate. So that is... Yeah, that does actually go for it. There and... There we go. Oh, that's a good few shots right there. That's nice. It's waving its tail. Doesn't appreciate what was just done. And just keep going for it. Keep going for the weak points. Nearly half health. Not looking good. But the problem is it's actually very bad at um, killing you. To be honest, it's actually really bad at killing you. Right, everyone probably just get into cover. He'd be so kind. He's gone over there. And then, oh, blimey. Few shots at the eye. And now just over to this. Though, admittedly, the Locust will probably do a pretty good job. And he just missed, which is even better. Did I just hear flipping Harbinger? Harbinger, we don't need you right now, all right? I'm busy. Right, fortunately, the Locust can really take apart Harbinger pretty quickly. So that's all 100% fine. Harbinger's almost dead because I'm pretty sure he was just actually attacked by the Reaper there. So someone just finish him off if you'd be so kind. Lovely. Right, now, back to this guy who moves around very quickly. It's very hard to get a bead on him. Right, where's he going to be next? There's, oh, there's some ammo up there that I might want to basically run and get at some point. And, oh, that's not good. Right, well, this is a good opportunity for me to run and get that. Because otherwise he's about to shoot me from the other side. So, let's go and get some of that. And, oh, blimey. Right, well, someone's around here. Where is, I think, like, occasionally just people like, you know, just the old person flies in and becomes Harbinger. Yeah, we've got collector drones over there. Nothing major. They'll go down very quickly to the locust, which is the nice thing. And I think he's got friendly fire, by the way. So he will be taken out by his own things. Right. Hang out here for a second. Does he... Yeah, I think... I'm not sure whether the harbinger took any damage there. Everyone's still alive, which is amazing. Now just stay in cover. Watch out for him. We're almost through his... Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Look how fast the locust tears through him. Lovely. Uh, everyone, just throw your things at him, please. Thank you. More people probably coming in in a moment. I've probably just got some sniper ammo back, which is marvellous. Yep, I do indeed, which means I've just got a few shots with the Widow. And there we go. That was a good shot. That was it. Couple right up front here. 
together with Seeker Swarms. Are you about to be hit by that? I think... I don't know. I think one of them might have been annihilated and the other one, like, just auto-became flipping Harbinger. Which is kind of nice. Harbinger's gonna come for me in a second. I'm just gonna go invisible to buy some time. Oh, he's over there. Oh, this isn't good. This is... Oh, no, good. He is... I think he's not here. And now we've got Harbinger right there. That's... This is concerning. I think he's just killed both my team members, which is annoying. Harbinger's doing way better than the flipping Reaper is. I really hope the Reaper doesn't show up on this side. I think he's not. I think he's on the other side. He's... No, he's on this side. Lovely. Well, that's just good, isn't it? Now he's right flipping right. You know... Oh, ballsing hell. He's just destroyed some of the flipping everything. Right, I need to get out to here. I've just been given a top-up of heavy weapon ammo. I'm not sure where from, to be honest. Uh, right, just just let him go to... When are you going to... Oh, bloody hell. Right, I need to get out of here. Over here. And now I just need to... You know what? Screw you, you bastard. And now just... Oh, I'm out of everything. This is no good at all. This is probably how I die right here. Because I'm not ready to do anything. Oh, that's so annoying. That was going really well. And I've just got myself overexposed versus Harbinger. And... Invisible! Okay. This sort of works, at least a little bit. He's charging. More people are flying in over there, but they're not ready to fire yet. If I go over to pistol, one shot to the face will... Oh, that's so annoying. We were so close there. Still, on the plus side, because I've now restarted, the game has topped up my Widow ammo, which is magnificently good news, because that means... Come on, no, 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 just hold still. And reload. Then hold still while you bastard. Yeah, there we are. Now I've got plenty of sniper ammo. Which is good stuff. Nice. Oh, yeah. We can do good stuff with all of this here sniper ammo. And I should probably try and stay on top of the ammo. While I've got plenty of time to just nip around and try and find something. Anything around here? You're around there, which isn't good in the slightest. You know, guys... I've decided I shouldn't have gone up there. I was kind of hoping there might be ammo, but there probably wasn't, so it's it's fine. There we go. Wait for him to charge. Lovely. And he's probably going to nip out of the way. Did you both die? Well done, guys. Right, let's get you back right now. And oh, oh, oh. There we go. One of you is almost dead at least. Yeah, having some biotics here is not a bad idea because you can push people like off this place pretty easily. Uh, so now just take these guys out before they become the next Harbinger. There's the flipping Reaper. Um, Kasumi, can't recommend where you're hiding at the minute, to be honest. Doesn't feel like a good place. I'm pretty sure he just killed at least a couple of them. Marvellous. Right, I just need to stay back here for a second. Harbinger's here, but I think he's kind of stuck at the front for a second there. Though he annoyingly can obviously kind of push through. He can like, knock me out of cover. Right, just take him out, please. Right, he's dead. I think I'm out of sniper ammo. And I can do a little bit of damage, but he just moves around so quickly. If you don't pick the right moment, it's a bit on the tricky side. But I can do at least a little bit here. Right, yep, there we go. And probably at this point, hide. No, he's not charging right now. Well, that's fine. In which case, I'm actually doing a pretty good job there. That was good. And then... Yeah. All right, fine. Down to about 40 odd percent. Kasumi is down. Let's get her back up again. Kasumi, please stop. Also, more ammo. That was also heavy weapon ammo. Could you please, please stop being in the way? Right, how much have I got there? That's... Ooh, back up to 11. Well, that's nice. And then we've got ourselves just hold still. That was good. Right. Who's actually on the field right now? Are there more... No, he's just destroyed one of those over there. Which is fine. Yeah, he changed the shape of the battlefield by, like, knackering it down, which is uh, sometimes a bit tricky to deal with. He's now over here, and there's no Harbinger at the minute, at least. And just wait for him to pick the position he wants to be in. Another hexagon will come in sooner or later, carrying some more people. Where are you? This is generally a pretty safe position if he decides to... No! Unless he decides to be over there, which is where he just decided to be. Which is annoying. And that'll do. Right, and... That'll do. And I'm just going to get over here to be in cover from what his attacks over there. And also more people just decided to attack from that direction. We're nearly done, mind. I almost just want to say screw the rest of them. We'll just prioritise him now. Come on, just stay still. That was good. We're so close to done. So close to done. And one more. Come on. Come on. Yes! Ha! 
Ah! Oh, Mass Effect 2, insanity mode, done, human reaper dead, and that is your lot. Now, to see if I've done my maths correctly and we've actually got the perfect ending. Now, of course, Shepard checks on her teammates. If they're loyal, they're alive. If they weren't loyal, they would be dead. And Shepard does the dramatic hero leap that actually is not just for show. If too many of your companions die, there's no one left to help drag Shepard up into this ship. I believe if you have less than two companions left alive, then Shepard falls to their death. Joker sends a message to the elusive man, and that's the end of the game. Shepard died. There is an ending where Shepard dies. Yeah, I get the gist of it, Edie. Hold on. Shepard, you're making a habit of costing me more than time and money. You get the help you deserve. And what about the rest of humanity? Your ideals have cost us more than you can imagine. The technology from that base could have secured human dominance in the galaxy against the Reapers and beyond. Human dominance or just Cerberus? Strength for Cerberus is strength for every human. Cerberus is humanity. I should have known you'd choke on the hard decisions. Too idealistic from the start. I'm not looking for your approval. Harbinger's coming and he won't be alone. Humanity needs a leader who's looking out for them. From now on, I'm doing things my way, whether you agree or not. Don't turn your back on me, Shepard. I made you. I brought you back from the dead. Joker, lose this channel.
Oh, that's a good way to end the game, mind. And there we are. We have made it safe and well, and the fish have survived. Apart from that one time they all died, now to go and buy new ones. But on that one occasion, the fish have survived. Marvellous. In fact, easy enough to check, I just stepped ashore at Omega for a second, and indeed everyone is present and correct. A full contingent of survivors. Marvellous. And of course, we have at this point pretty much gone rogue from Cerberus. We've taken the ship, Edie's on our side, everyone's on our side because everyone is so loyal. Miranda officially handed in her resignation, so just a couple of people I want to check in with before we're done here. One on the achievements you can access through the little thing on your desk in your room, just proof there. Complete the game on Insanity difficulty without changing the setting, so that is just proof that the entire game was completed on Insanity. I never changed the difficulty in the slightest. Marvellous. Next up, Miranda. Obviously, previously, effectively the elusive man's kind of second in command. How is she feeling about all of this? We had to do it, Shepard. Taking down the collector base was the right decision. The elusive man might not agree, but we had no choice. Well, seems like she is mostly at peace with that. Good, good. She believes it was the right thing to do. And now, finally, I really flipping hope Legion is willing to talk to me because he's got some of my favourite dialogue in the game and he's just refused to... Ah, I'd never noticed this before. One of the crew is in the med bay, of course, because some of them have been through some rather rough things. Yes, Legion has some of my favourite dialogue in the game and he's just refused to give it to me. Legion, please, tell me your history here. When we took you aboard, I noticed you have a piece of N7 armor welded to you. Where'd you get it? It was yours. When you disappeared, we were sent to find you. We began where you first encountered the heretics. Eden Prime. After the old machine's attack, it was heavily defended. We were discovered. This is the impact of a rifle shot. You've been looking for me for two years? We visited Therum, Pharos, Novaria, Vermeer, Ilos, a dozen unsettled worlds. The trail ended at Normandy's wreckage. You were not there. Organic transmissions claimed your death. We recovered this debris from your heart suit. Why were you trying to contact me? You opposed the heretics, those that took the old machines as gods. All kinds of organics fought Sovereign and his Geth allies. Why am I so interesting? You were the most successful. You killed their god. You succeeded where others did not. Your code is superior. The Geth are listening in on our transmissions? Organic life reacts to stimuli in unpredictable ways. We wish to learn. What do you mean by stimuli? We placed a fabricated story on the extranet that a certain arrangement of stars viewed from the Batarian homeworld formed the face of a Salarian goddess. Without waiting for verification, some declared a proof of the goddess's existence. Those who noted the lack of proof were attacked. The arguments taught us much. The experiment ended when a Salarian cult tried to purchase colonization rights to the stars and found they did not exist. That doesn't explain why you used my armor to fix yourself. There was a hole. But why didn't you fix it sooner or with something else? No data available. I absolutely love that at the end there. Well, yeah, he had a hole shot through him on Eden Prime, and eventually he partly repaired himself by tying a bit of my armour to himself. Why do that rather than something more suitable or something he found sooner? He doesn't know, or if he does know, he's not willing to admit it. I mean, Geth are not just, you know, ones and zeros. There's sentience in there. They definitely have, you know, they're not just VIs. They're true AIs. They've got independence and thought and some level of creative thinking, and maybe this is some level of sentimentality. Legion's wonderful, and Legion... Legion likely has some form of fascination with Shepard that Legion just doesn't really know how to articulate, and it's just beautiful. And with that lovely moment, one of my favourites in the entirety of the Mass Effect franchise, with everyone survived, with the whole crew rescued, with the ship fully upgraded, with all of my teammates surviving and loyal and everyone happy, that is pretty much, literally, all we can do here. And I've just been trapped inside an elevator. Well, that'd be an unfortunate way to die after everything we've just been through. And that, ladies and gentlemen, means this is the end of Mass Effect 2. I love Mass Effect 2. It's got so many wonderful moments, so many wonderful moments of... I mean, it's the script, really. It's the story and the script and the characters. 
that makes it. I mean, there's so many missteps in some ways. Like, you know, the gameplay is often a little bit on the derivative side with too much chest high wall shooting, too many levels are padded, too many really interesting moral choices are simplified or never properly fleshed out. But I just love it anyway because the universe and the stories and the characters just work so, so well. It's a wonderful, wonderful game. It's been a privilege to play through it on insanity mode for you, ladies and gentlemen. And a real challenge in places too, especially the Geth. The Geth were really, really bloody tough indeed. It's not my favourite game in the Mass Effect franchise. That is most definitely Mass Effect 1. But it is my second favourite. In all fairness, I think they basically progressively got worse in some ways. I just prefer Mass Effect 1's gameplay. And I prefer Mass Effect 1's much more subtle, interesting, in-depth storytelling. Where, you know, there were a smaller number of worlds. But you got to explore them all a lot more thoroughly. And learn a lot more. And generally the stories in each world were more self-contained. And a lot more in-depth. But I just love Mass Effect 2. It's a wonderful, wonderful game. I'm so looking forward to Andromeda. Andromeda is going to be amazing. It just looks really promising. Like, you know, there's a few things that don't necessarily look that spectacular, but I think it's making so many good ideas. Look, it's more open. The stories, like, you know, there's a lot more flexibility in how you handle conversations. You know, there's a huge amount of personalization and flexibility in how you upgrade your character. There's so much there that could be amazing, and it feels like it might just wed together my favorite bits of Mass Effect 1 with the great bits from Mass Effect 2 and 3 as well. And would that not just be wonderful if that were the case? I look forward to that immensely. But for Mass Effect 2, we are done now, ladies and gentlemen. And that means there is a new spot opening up on Saturday for a new series. Not with Mass Effect 3. No, 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 no. I think we need a little break from the Mass Effect franchise for just a little bit. But not that long. Mass Effect Andromeda is coming along pretty bloody soon. Instead, uh, I'm going to put together something that I think a lot of people have potentially been waiting for and wanting for quite a bit of time, ladies and gentlemen. I think you are going to like what comes next. But in the meantime... I've been John, this has been many a true nut, and this is the end of Mass Effect 2, an absolutely wonderful, glorious game. I absolutely adore this franchise. It's just wonderful, and it has been a privilege to play it for you. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Okay, now I don't want to be insensitive right now, but the best thing you can do is stamp on her head until it's mush. Get the gun! No, 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 do not just walk past the gun! Oh, yeah, the door with the bloody handprint on it. That's gonna go well. Eleanor, come on. Eleanor! Where the hell are you? Oh, God, you're the worst person ever.